everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours, because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful Sun Bear. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Celia, Joyce, Vinny, Tom, and Terry. Thank you all for taking the time to request this animal, and I hope you enjoy your episode. For how to request an animal, and for all of the facts that were used in this episode, that info is in the description, and I will also be covering it at the end of the show. If you want exclusive Relax with Animal Facts episodes, if you want to vote on the next podcast episode every month, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts. We are just now finishing up the Animal Mechanism miniseries and we'll be moving on to more exclusive content. A huge shout out to George Vlad who provided all of the ambiances that we will be using on this show. He enjoyed the show and made it possible for us to even have these in the first place. And so I have included his website and his YouTube in the description and I encourage all of you to go subscribe and check out his channel. And now let us begin to slow down just a little. As always, I have three primary exhortations for you. The first thing I encourage you to do is to put on a pair of shoes that are versatile and you don't mind getting wet. The second is that you notice perhaps where you are carrying some tension. Is it in the shoulders? Is it in the arms? In the legs? Everybody here is different, but my exhortation to you is the same. Do your best to relax whatever is tense for you. You can bring up some jello in your mind and do your best to impersonate it. And the third thing I ask is that you give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into a lowland rainforest in Borneo where the sun bear resides. What a privilege it is to be able to visit this part of the world. It is like the rain droplets on the plants are the percussion and the insects are singing in soprano. And so here we are in Borneo, the third largest island in the whole world and the largest in Asia. It is part of Southeast Asia's Malay archipelago and it is known for its beaches, its ancient, biodiverse rainforest in which we are right now. And this is not only home to such creatures like the sun bear, but it is home to some favorites like orangutans and clouded leopards. But here we are not concerned with leopards or orangutans, we are concerned with the sun bear. Its scientific name is Helarctos malayanus. That former word, Helarctos, is not actually Latin, it's Greek. The Hel in Helarctos is just the shortened form of Helios, which is sun, while Arctos means bear, and so Helarctos means sun bear. The latter part of their scientific name, Malayanus, is indeed a Latin word that is used to describe somebody from modern-day Malaysia, or what was once known as Malaya. So their scientific name literally means sun bear from Malaya. You cannot get any more specific than that. The sun bear is of course a mammal. They will live up to 25 years in the wild, and they are going to be from between 4 to 5 feet long, weighing between 60 to 150 pounds. For those of you that prefer kilos, that is 27 to 68 kilograms. And so this bear is significantly smaller than some of the larger bears that we have covered. The polar bear, for example, can weigh up to a thousand pounds, around 450 kilograms. And so the 60 to 150 pound sun bear looks to be on the smaller end of things. 
They are indeed the smallest member of the bear family. And now we did not necessarily have to be in the lowland rainforests of Borneo. They can be found from southern China to eastern India to Indonesia, and so they are not exclusively found where we are today. And they are exclusively found, however, in Southeast Asia. The sun bear gets their name from a bib-shaped golden or white patch that is located on their chest. This was interpreted time ago as a representation of the rising sun. And these little pale horseshoe shapes that are on their chests are unique from individual to individual. No two markings are the same. This is the second rarest bear species after the giant panda. Now, it is worth mentioning that the sun bear, possibly relating to its rarity, is one of the least studied bear species. So today we will attempt to exhaust all of the facts about them, but perhaps we will learn more and more in the future. Maybe one of you listening out there will go to study more of the sun bear and require me to do another update to this episode. This stocky, muscular bear that has small ears and a short muzzle has been nicknamed the dog bear. I suppose it is their compactness that has given them this nickname. They have short black fur. Their black fur is quite short in order to avoid any overheating in these tropical environments of Southeast Asia, but their short fur is also quite thick in order to provide protection from branches and from twigs, and of course from all of that rain that is coming down all the time. Now one very cool fact, which some may label as ironic, is that the sun bear is nocturnal. Although their distinct markings on their chest were said to represent the rising sun, they are active mainly when the sun has not actually risen yet. And so it is through the night time that they will be primarily active, going through the forests and snacking on berries, roots, fruits, insects, lizards, birds, and rodents. Their physical characteristics are quite well designed for what they do. They have an amazing sense of smell, very long claws, and a tongue that is so long it almost looks like a cartoon. The length of their tongue is from between 8 to 10 inches. That is nearly a foot long of just tongue. So those long claws, which can be more than 4 inches in length, are useful for ripping open trees and nests of termites. And that huge tongue is useful for getting honey out from bees' nests. And this is what merited them the nickname of the Honey Bear. I mean, their tongue is seriously something else. And in their behavior, they will live pretty solitary lives, with the exception of, of course, mating season and when females are raising cubs. Cubs will remain with their mother for about three years after it is born, before it is mature enough and fully independent to go out on their own. Now, apart from a few facts about their social life, not much else is known so far. There is evidence to suggest that they are monogamous, meaning they have one partner through their life. Sows, which are another word for mama bears, they make their nests in the ground and will give birth from one to two blind, helpless cubs. One awesome fact is that mother sun bears have been observed to cradle a cub in their arms while they are walking on their hind legs. Now the sun bear plays a crucial role in its environment. That is of course no surprise given that all of the animals we have covered on the show thus far have some kind of key role. But the sun bear, in living out their normal lives, ensure the health of the forest. They help disperse seeds of various plant life. They help keep termite populations in check. Through their extensive digging, they actually enhance the forest's nutrient cycle. As they dig, they are actually mixing the rich and the poor soil. 
and they provide habitation to animals like the flying squirrel or hornbills who like little crevices in trees as the sun bear tears open tree trunks to get to whatever they want they are actually creating another home and there is a charity or foundation called the Bornean Sun Bear Conservation Center that is in Malaysia. The mission of this conservation center in Sabah, Malaysia, is to promote the conservation of the sun bear in Borneo specifically through animal welfare, rehabilitation, conservation, education, research, some of the things that they do is rehabilitate and release orphaned and ex-captive bears into the wild. They provide long-term living environments for captive bears who no longer can be released into the wild. They engage in a lot of education for the public, raising awareness and things like that. And they invest in ongoing research and increased knowledge about these guys. So I have included their link in the description, and so you can go and donate or just read and things like that. This is so cool. And now let us move on to the name. What does the name of the sun bear mean? Well, we have covered why the sun bear is called the sun bear. But what we can do is cover the word bear and find out where it comes from. So the word bear is used to describe a large carnivorous or omnivorous mammal of the family Ursidae. It comes from Old English, then from Proto-Germanic, and then from Old High German. And this Old High German word is said to have come from the Proto-Indo-European root word bear, which is B-H-E-R, simply translated to bright or brown. So this root word probably applies well to the grizzly bear or the brown bear. The polar bear or the sun bear would certainly be exceptions to the case. But that is so cool nonetheless. And now let us move on to the review of this episode. And this review is coming from a user who did not use a lot of vowels in their username. And so it might be a little challenging to read it. The first four letters of the jumble spell out something like Jack, and so that is the name I will use. And Jack is writing all the way from the United States of America. And Jack writes, While this does help me sleep and I love the facts, I think he should be a little bit more quiet and show more inflection in his voice, as it gets just annoying how he sounds so sad to do this. I am not going to go on and on about what he should do. I do like the podcast and he is a wonderful host. Keep it up and don't let suggestions like mine bring you down. You're a wonderful host. Keep it up, KK. So I actually could have referred to Jack as KK. Sorry about that, KK. Thank you for your wonderful review and for that crucial feedback. I really do appreciate it. Now, the inflection, or rather the lack thereof, is actually a conscious choice that I am making when doing the show. The reason I talk the way I do is because I don't want there to be ups and downs constantly in my speech, because I would imagine that could hinder the relaxing or rather the sleeping process. Uniformity is often great for sleeping. I figured I wanted to be as uniform as possible so as to not maybe wake somebody up or have too many changes for them to actually fall asleep in the first place. But perhaps there is a way for me to introduce more inflection without stirring somebody up out of their slumber. But what I can assure you, KK, is that I am most certainly not sad to do this. All of you listening make it such a joy for me to be hosting this podcast, and I am so grateful to have listeners like yourself, KK, and all of you out there listening. If the show helps you at all, leaving a review is one of the greatest ways that you can help support the show. It can take less than a minute, but its impact is huge. You help the show to grow, of course, you give the show critical feedback, as KK did, and so I appreciate each and every review. If you would like to request an animal, you can go to relaxwithanimalfacts.com 
and click on the Animal Request tab. To get in contact with me for any other reason, you can either send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com or you can go to Instagram to the account Relax with Animal Facts and send a message there. For only a dollar a month, you can participate in voting for the next episode once a month and you get access to tons of exclusive ongoing content. You can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts for that. A huge shout out and thank you for George Vlad for the ambiances that he has given us. I encourage all of you to go and subscribe to his YouTube channel in the description. All of the facts that were used in this episode come from bsbcc.org, nationalgeographic.com, onekindplanet.org, britannica.com, and etimonline.com. This episode would not have been possible without these facts, and so I encourage all of you to go and check out these resources. What an amazing creature we covered today. It is true that there were not as many facts about the sun bear as there are, for example, for the grizzly bear or the polar bear. But already in what we do know about the sun bear are facts that are simply amazing. It is also on episodes like these that there is almost a to-be-continued kind of feel to it. I know many of you out there are listening as future zoologists and animal researchers, and who knows, maybe you will participate in some groundbreaking discoveries about the sun bear. I hope all of you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode with the next animal. Take care.